Hello Tangerines! In case you missed our last video, we are back in Mexico. Going to Las Vegas really reignited our travel bug, so we decided instead of staying at our home sweet home in Puerto Morelos, that we would begin traveling around the Riviera Maya. And we put it up to vote on Patreon, and our patrons voted for Bacalar. So where are we? We are not in Bacalar. We're in Tulum! <laughs> How did that work out? Basically, we started the hunt for Airbnbs in Bacalar and realized that like the most affordable ones wasn't decently priced ones we're a few weeks out and we booked it yeah we booked it <laughs> but then we're like where could we go in the meantime so our travels took us to Valladolid which we didn't actually get to make any videos there so enjoy some of these clips that we took while we were in that city catching up on all the crap that we didn't do while we were in Las Vegas and Tulum now we are exploring Tulum back this is only our second city that we've ever visited in Mexico that we've returned to for no other reason than just there's so much of Mexico we haven't seen but we do love Tulum, so back again. And although it is super windy right now, the chronicles of Tangerine Travels trying to find an external microphone so we re could record when it's windy are over, we hope, because we got a road mic and this whole like contraption of a setup. So I hate having to hold this whole I'm thing. Not, I'm really not a fan of it. I like just having the tiny camera, uh -huh. but. But you know what? I'm okay holding this big old contraption as long as we can make videos whenever we want to. Before we would like be all prepared to make a video one day and then it'd be like, So after living in Mexico for over a year and going back to the U.S., there was total reverse culture shock. And so going to Vegas in the first place, disclaimer, there's a lot of culture shocks there whether you're from the U.S. or not because mm -hmm. it's Vegas, just crazy crap happens all the time. I didn't anticipate that when we went back to the U.S., the reverse culture shocks we would experience, though, would be what they were. And I thought it would kind of just be like the shocks of Las Vegas because yeah. that is quite the place where you're going to have lots of wow moments. But lots of it, WTF moments. <laughs> but it totally wasn't about that. It was about things you're going to experience anywhere that were totally crazy to us. Oh, and the thing I, the disclaimer I wanted to do was that I think if we were to go, when we, when we go back to the U.S., when we go back to Phoenix in about a month, I'm sure we're going to have different reverse culture shocks than we did in Vegas because there, there's that level of like, oh yeah, that's Vegas. <laughs> yeah. So the absolute first thing that I experienced was when we were getting on the airplane, um, I'll try to make this a quick story and not a rant, but I really want it to be a rant. <laughs> and this is from Cancun uh, to the U.S., that's like. Yeah, our Southwest flight got changed, so instead of being very early in the boarding, we were last, literally probably the last people that were going to board this flight. We're going to pick with Southwest, but we're not going to go with them. <laughs> yeah, you can check our Twitter if you want to know what's going on with Southwest. <laughs> um, well, so we're getting on this plane, the very last to board, which means by this time we pretty much knew we were going to be sitting together. But they need to know, if they're not familiar with Southwest, that it's all, there, there are no seats assigned in advance. It's all okay, self-seating. Yeah. So you get on and you sit wherever you want. You just want to be early in the boarding process. We're walking past everyone on this flight, every single row, not a single row that this was not happening. And people had all of their stuff. It was like couples had all of their stuff piled in the middle seat. So everyone's taking up the aisle seat and the window seat and putting all their shit in the middle. And then as we're walking by, it's like, I'm just thinking if we can get somewhere close to each other on the plane, yeah. that would be nice. I mean, after all, this was our three year anniversary trip. So getting to sit together would have been peachy, but we're walking by every single row and all of these people putting all their crap in the middle and giving us the stink eye as we're walking by. It was like, my goodness, did I not miss this entitled, inconsiderate attitude that people have yeah, in I the swear. U.S. If that was a Mexico to Mexico flight, everyone would be like, oh, you want to sit together? Oh, okay, we'll move over. Uh, mija, yeah, mija, move. <laughs> you, you'd have like the, the grandma of the group reorchestrating the whole plane so that we could sit together. That's how Mexicans are. They are very caring and considerate and thoughtful quite unlike the people of this plane. So that was the first thing and it was like, oh great, this is what we're going back into to the US, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully it wasn't all like that throughout our trip, but that was, was our not, first impression. <laughs> yeah, that was not a great start being reintroduced to the world of Americans again. As soon as I got to the US, one culture shock that was immediately apparent to me was that I was having trouble speaking English. I just kept 
defaulting back to Spanish. And then I finally got used to it and then we came back to Mexico and I had a really hard time speaking Spanish and English kept coming up. So maybe that's just a learning two languages thing or uh, starting to know multiple languages and that happens for everyone or maybe it's just especially bad with me but that's something I really really struggle with. And I had to ask this question on Facebook because with language the reverse culture shock for me was that I was kind of like this is great now I can speak Spanish with people but then I'm like it's common that people can be pretty easily offended by stuff like that like oh how dare you assume I speak Spanish so then I was having this constant struggle the entire time like if I can tell they have an accent a Spanish accent should I speak Spanish with them are they going to like it are they going to be offended so I was just having that internal struggle the whole week for me, I think the only time I intentionally spoke Spanish was with the housekeepers and that one time I do think they appreciated it, especially the one lady, she was struggling with her English. Oh, her face lit right up oh, yeah. when we started speaking Spanish and she was like, <laughs> oh yeah, we live in Mexico now. <laughs> we are at this place called Tea Totem, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, it's close to where we're staying, our Airbnb. They have this really cool upstairs rooftop area that Jordan discovered no one is sitting up here. But they also have like a garden area back there. But we had to come up here because they're playing copywritten music down there and we can't record in that. Um, so Constant struggle. <laughs> <laughs> but we stopped in because they advertise this matcha latte and Jordan got a regular latte. And this is 90 pesos, expensive if I do say so, and very average, but it's nice to cool us off because it's quite toasty out. The next one on our list of reverse culture shocks, and that is that there is so much more Spanish going on all around us than I ever anticipated. And I'm sure this is even multiplied in Arizona where we used to live. There was probably Spanish being spoken everywhere and it just was background noise that we never picked up because we didn't understand it. And this time we understand them all. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps stereotypically one might think that you would hear Spanish, especially among like housekeepers and cleaning staff, things like that, but we heard it everywhere from, mm -hmm. from people vacationing in Las Vegas, from reception, uh, where else? Restaurants? Yeah, I think you're right though. It kind of gets just drowned out in the noise if you don't speak the language, but once you start to learn the language and are listening for Spanish more actively than you hear it. And that made me wonder. Oh my gosh, look at this wind. <laughs> but that made me wonder, has it always been like this? Has there always been this much Spanish around us all the time? And speaking of shocks, we have a miniature story time for you guys because last night we got woken up in the most shocking, surprising, and scary way that has ever happened to me in my life. Like this, I, I don't think I've ever been so scared to be woken up. So basically, from my point of view, there was this terrible noise, awful, like a, a shrieking, whirring, pounding noise. Um, and at that point, I started worrying. I, I stood straight, I mean, I sat straight up out of bed. I had no idea what was going on. I freaked out. Jordan was next to me. He leapt across me, like he started cl climbing across the bed, probably just like out of instinct trying to like run away from whatever it was. We had no idea where this noise was coming from. Was there someone in the place? Like what was going on? And Jordan, from your perspective? Pretty much the same thing. Super loud noise. I thought I heard some crashing. I don't know. I was in a very, very deep state of sleep and then I I was, was woken up and then I jumped up. I don't even know what I was doing, <laughs> but I quickly got very dis... Oh disoriented. Now, now the audience is disoriented. <laughs> I got very disoriented. Like I knew what Airbnb we were in, but I didn't know which direction I was facing in the room. It was super dark. But this was our air conditioner. Like something's wrong with it. We only had it at like 22 or 23 no, degrees Celsius, 23. which is somewhere between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And man, that thing was loud. It's forming ice, ice just shattering on the ground. <laughs> it was a mess. Well, so then you got up though, and Jordan's standing underneath it. He's like, it's snowing. It, yeah. It's snowing outside of out of our air conditioning, so we had to turn it off for the rest of the night. It was terrifying. But back to the list now. <laughs> Story time over. <laughs> I know one culture shock for you was you made a comment while we were in Vegas about people's clothes and what they were wearing. 
oh yeah, in Mexico, it's a lot of places are way more conservative than in the US. So over the course of our channel, I've gotten a lot of comments and critiques on what I'm wearing, cleavage, no cleavage, shorts versus pants, dresses on certain dates, like anything you can think of. So I have adopted a more conservative style of dress just so that I don't freaking have to hear it in the comment section. But when we <laughs> went to Las Vegas, it was like, Wow, I am one of the most conservatively dressed people around. You've got chicks going around in like pasties and g-strings practically compared to what I'm wearing. Like not really, they're not really wearing that, but um, certainly much more like fashion focused, but not with any consideration whatsoever to how much skin one is covering. So that yeah. was a little bit like, Whoa. <laughs> and that's something that's going to be accentuated in Vegas, but heck, you go to Scottsdale right by where we live, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same. Southern California, it's the same deal there. Yeah. Yes, and uh, even, so like beachy destinations like uh -huh. Tulum is a pretty good example of people not dressing conservatively because yeah. it's way more tourism, American uh, culture focused, having that like beachy, hippie chic thing I think is how people describe it normally. <laughs> um, but any other place in Mexico, well <laughs> not any, most other places in Mexico like Guadalajara or Puebla or pretty much anywhere that's not a beach, <laughs> a <laughs> popular beach, it's going to be very conservative. So that was really weird to see going back to the US. And you had an interesting observation when yeah. we were in Vegas too once we started gambling a little bit getting uh, American currency again. Yeah, so this one's kind of a little silly, um, but just the coinage. In Mexico, you have these coins that are relatively heavy compared to a quarter. I always thought of a quarter as a big coin, but even, like compare that to the 10 peso and it weighs nothing, nothing at all. It like Monopoly money. Yeah. Which ironically is what we thought of the actual physical peso bills in Mexico first because they're very like plasticky mm -hmm. feeling, yeah. um, not like paper money that had, like the U.S. currency feels like. that place and I was paying for 125 pesos of our lattes. I gave a 200 and I got 57 back. So at that point I was like, what the heck, this isn't the right change. I asked for the ticket and then they were like, oh, it already includes the servicio of their decided 15%. You know, there, there's some cities that where they do that a lot, where they have a tip already added on there mm -hmm. and this seems to be one of those. Yeah. Last night in Tulum we went to a restaurant and again today at this coffee shop both times a 15% tip was included on the bill. So just keep that in mind if you're coming to Tulum and look out for that on the ticket when you get it. Saying servicio or propina or mm -hmm. maybe abbreviated to P-R-O-P mm -hmm. so that you're not double tipping on top of the whole like already included tip amount. Back to those reverse culture shocks. When we got to our layover, which was in Houston, we decided to get some food at Buffalo Wild Wings, which is where our next one happened. I miss that place. I love boneless wings. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> First thing we noticed there, how many freaking times the waiter came to the table? It was like every two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it got to be like, we're fine. Like, I don't need babysitting. Like, you gave us our shit. Now leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we got used to the Mexican way where uh, m most restaurants, they usually don't come around very often. But my goodness, you get down to the end of your plate or you only have a little bit of your drink left, you better watch that like a hawk if you want to finish it because <laughs> I swear they come out of nowhere in Mexico to take away your plate. <laughs> but they don't pester you. They just come to the table to take those things. Whereas what we were experiencing at Buffalo Wild Wings was this guy just coming over and asking us like, hey, are you guys doing okay? Can I get you anything else? Do you want another drink? Would you like to order any more wings? Like we're used to just ordering and then that being done 
like we don't interact again yeah. with the waiter usually until we're ready for the check where and, we ask for it. And <laughs> it's not that this guy was a bad waiter. He was no, a he was very a polite, he was helpful. a good waiter and he was extremely attentive. But we've just grown accustomed to the way they do things at restaurants in Mexico, <laughs> which I personally prefer. And then at the end of this meal, they rush you out the door. <laughs> they rush you out the door. This is just common. This is just how it is in the U.S. When it looks like you're wrapping up and they've asked you if you wanted anything else like 25 times and you've said no, well then at that <laughs> point they're like, okay, here's your check whenever you're ready. And you didn't ask for it. I do appreciate that you can sit at the table however long you want in Mexico. You can chat. You can maybe have more drinks or wait till you're ready for dessert. And you ask the waiter when you want la cuenta. Whereas in the U.S. they're just like, here you go, and slide it on the table. <laughs> in fairness, you can still in the U.S. stay at the table as long as you want, but it kind of feels a little different. It feels like you're kind yeah. of rushed. Please excuse our sweatiness. I'm, yeah. I have so much sweat dripping down my face. Sweat mustache every two seconds. It's so <laughs> hot. <laughs> All right, the next reverse culture shock. A while back we were at a restaurant, I think it was, trying some salsas with a Mexican friend and I was <laughs> rating them on a scale of one to ten in spiciness <laughs> and I remember there was one that I thought was an eight or a nine he called it a two <laughs> <laughs> so naturally as you spend more time in Mexico you get more and more used to the spiciness and when we went back to the US <laughs> there was stuff that was listed as spicy and then we tried it and it was like no more picante. Yeah, I was like, this isn't spicy. What are you talking about? So all of a sudden, any food that was supposed to be spicy, even hot sauces and stuff, even mm -hmm. Tabasco. I think here in Mexico, Tabasco tastes pretty spicy. Yeah. But I don't know if it's a different recipe or something. It's got. It's got to be. There was hardly spice in it at all. I'm like, quote, piling it on. <laughs> so that that was strange and kind of cool, but like food tasted kind of bland in, in spiciness terms because of us getting so used to spicier food here in Mexico. Imposter! Oh, yeah. Hi, Taylor. Oh. <laughs> so as we were going to the U.S., there was something I was pretty worried about, which is eating food from the U.S. again, because at the time we were leaving, I was having so many issues. Anything I put in my mouth was causing me some type of a reaction in my body, like really bad reactions. So I was expecting that that was going to happen when we went back to Vegas, when we went back to the U.S., but to my shock, it didn't. So I think my mercury detox is working and my body is better able to handle food. But there is a caveat, I didn't eat anything processed. So like no crackers, chips, bread, anything nothing like that. Nothing out of a bag or box? No, yeah, exactly. Nothing that came from a factory, all natural stuff. I think there was one time where I ate like some type of a gluten-free dessert and my stomach was hurting after that. The one other time we ate something that was kind of processed was In-N-Out Burger. Like the burger itself is more processed than the other food I was eating. And after that, I had like a throat reaction. My throat started feeling itchy and scratchy and I kind of had a stomach ache and it felt like the food was sitting in my stomach. So processed food just seems to do yeah. bad stuff to yeah, me. With those exceptions. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Everything though. else was smooth sailing, good times, easy breezy. Beautiful cover girl. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Quick mention before we wrap this up, there is a sale going on right now for our favorite program Rocket Languages. This is how we've been learning Spanish since we started. We think it's the most effective, all-inclusive software you can get. Um, so if you're thinking about wanting to learn Spanish or you've been wanting to get Rocket Languages, now is the perfect time to do it. There's only what, like a thousand uh, yeah, it's, uh, things sold? It's for the first thousand courses and I think this sale is going to be coming towards the end as you see this video. So we'll link to that in the description and you can hop on over there. And last and final update, you might have noticed this super snazzy shirt I'm wearing. These are our t-shirts that we are going to be releasing. I'll take that. <laughs> Jordan's trying to walk backwards without falling over stuff. These are the shirts that we're going to be releasing soon. We wanted to do that with Teespring, but we've had some issues with them. Really bad customer service. I feel like the printing is a little bit on the lower quality side, and we don't want you spending your hard-earned money on an, a lackluster t-shirt that the customer service might not even help you get in the end. So we're still ironing that out. When that... Oh my gosh. Something just ran into my lip. <laughs> but when we 
get that ironed out, we are going to be so happy to finally release these approximately eight months after we hoped to do so. <laughs> <laughs> I am really curious to hear what type of reverse culture shocks you guys have experienced, what anything that we didn't mention, let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and think someone else might get a kick out of it, share it with a friend on Facebook, WhatsApp, wherever you do. And subscribe to our channel to see more of what we're putting out in Tulum and after this in Bacalar and Mahahoal. I'm so excited for these upcoming videos, guys. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And one last thing. <laughs> Gong that bell. So you get notified when we put out those videos. And we will see you there. What the heck? Gonging the bell. Oh my gosh. <laughs>